Do you need a REST HTTP endpoint to return an image? In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through setting up a web service in Mule that will load and return images from your computer. This will allow calls from a web browser to request specific images and have them displayed on the page. We're inside our AnyPoint Studio version 6.3 and we'll be using the Mule Runtime Server 3.9.0 Enterprise Edition. The first step we need, of course, is we need some images to return to the customer. Inside a source main resources file, I've dropped two image files in there. One named mulesoft.jpg and the other mulesoft.png. The JPEG is just MuleSoft's logo and name. And the PNG is just the logo with the turquoise blue background. Since source main resources on the default class path, these two images will be packaged up when we create our deployable archive to be sent to different environments. We just have to be wary that if we are using a lot of images, the deployable archive may get quite large. It may be better in that case to upload the images directly onto the server and then load them directly from there. That structure is just a one line change in our mule code and I'll show you how once we get there. Now it's time to create our web service. I've set up a mule configuration file named images which contains two flows. We're going to start with this top one titled image flows. Our message source is an HTTP inbound listener listening on path slash image and allowing get requests. Typical web browsing where you're requesting information from a server are translated into HTTP get requests. So setting allowed methods to get will allow us to route those requests into this flow. Next we have a logger for debugging purposes, a set payload, and this is where we load the image from our source main resources folder into our mule message payload. And then another logger for debugging purposes. Now let's dive into the magic that's inside this set payload. Inside the value section we're using a really long mule expression language. There isn't anything actually mule related in this. If you're a Java web developer, you may have seen this before. As Mule expression language is built on top of Java, we're able to use their classes if we ever need more complex logic. Let's break this down into parts. Thread is actually referencing the Java class, java.lang.thread. Current thread returns a reference to the currently executing thread object, which is handling the customer request through our flow. Get context class loader returns the already created class loader that Mule is using to load classes and resources. And get resource as stream is just a fancy way of saying load our image in part by part. And in our case, the parts are bytes. And there's one more thing we need to set. Mind types are a way of identifying files that are transferring over the internet. Web browsers will use them to figure out how to render the files they're receiving. A quick example is if I open up this MuleSoft PNG file with the default editor. As you can see, this editor didn't understand that it was opening up a PNG file and rendered it as a bunch of weird characters. Most modern web browsers do a better job at recognizing that they're receiving a certain type of image file without a MIME type, but it's better to set it so we don't have to worry about it later. Since we're returning our JPEG image, for the MIME type we'll select image JPEG. Time to save and run our project in debug mode. Let's move over to our browser. and access our endpoint on path image. Our breakpoint kicks in at the set payload component. 
Our message payload is still null. Let's step across. And voila, our image has been loaded as a buffered input stream. As well as you can see, our mine type has been set to image slash PNG. Let's run this through the end, back to our browser, and you can see our image was loaded and rendered correctly. Awesome. So our simple flow proves that we can create a web service that receives web browser requests and returns an image to be rendered. Though it works, it's not a realistic real-world use case. A more common one would be if we could specify a specific image to be returned. Let's design that in our second flow. The image by ID flow again starts off with the message source being an HTTP inbound endpoint. But this time the path is slash image slash and we have a placeholder where we can pull in an image ID. We're going to use this ID to specify which image inside our source main resources we're going to return back to the customer. So let's drag in a choice router. And bring our first set payload in there. This one returns our JPEG. Drag a second one. Copy our expression. But this time we're returning the PNG. Make sure we set our mind type. Image.png. And let's set a third one in the default scope, which will just return the string image not found. Let's click on the choice router so we can define our routing strategy. If it equals one, we'll route to the first set payload. If it's the number two, we'll route to the second set payload. And then anything else we'll route into our default. Take away this breakpoint and let's test it out. We're going to add the resource ID to our URL. There it goes, and it loaded the MuleSoft image and name. And if we choose number two, awesome, we get our second image. Now let's just try three. Hopefully we go into the default scope. Perfect, and we get the message image not found. There, now that's a more useful web service. Now before I let you go, I'm going to show you another alternative to loading a file through Mule expression language. And this is with using the Mule Requester module. This module isn't installed inside AnyPoint Studio by default. So you have to go to their GitHub link, download it, and install it yourself. There's a link to a simple tutorial on how to do this in the video description below. It's super easy and only a few steps. This module allows you to request a resource at any point in a flow. This is unique as Mule doesn't generally allow you to use import transports outside of the message source area. So shout out to Sebastian who created this module. Back in AnyPoint Studio, I've gone and installed this GitHub module already. You can tell it's installed if you can see the new component Mule requester on your Mule palette. In order to keep this video shorter, which I clearly have issues doing, I'm going to go ahead and paste the flow which I've previously created. The image with requester flow 
is pretty simple. The path is slash images slash mule soft. And inside two loggers is our mule requester component. In the resource field is where we specify the path to our image. One of the benefits of this module is how easy it is to change how we're fetching our file. Just by changing this file protocol to VM, FTP, JMS, and others. Another benefit over using our mule expression language is their ability to set a timeout value, as well as throw an exception when that timeout is exceeded. At the beginning of the video, I promised to show you how easy it was to access images on your server's file system instead of the class path. Well, that can be done by changing the resource file. After the file protocol, we specify one more forward slash to denote the root of the server. And then we could specify if you're on a Windows box, your C drive colon, and then the full path to the image file. So let's revert that, put a breakpoint. Oh, and it's already running, so we just save it. Over to our web browser. The path was slash image slash mule soft. We've stopped at the mule requester breakpoint. Play through. And there, our image is returned. And there you have it. We were able to create three web services that take web browser requests and return images. The first one used mule expression language to return a single image. The second one allowed us to specify the ID of an image we wanted returned. And the third one used an alternative way of loading images by using the mule requester module. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have a question or comment, please leave it below and I'll be happy to reply. Please remember to hit the like button. And if you're interested in more videos on MuleSoft technology and API development, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.